All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for a conversation with Judah Hernandez. Uh, my name is Maurice Russell with Sony of Canada, one of the business development managers in Sony Canada. And Judah will be talking to us today about um, focusing on, I think, the art of storytelling, right, Judah? That is correct, yes. All right. So, Judah, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks again. And uh, to the audience, if you have any questions, feel free to enter it into the Q&A after this or stand by for some questions. So, Judah, take it from here. Well, first of all, I want to say a huge thank you to Sony Canada and to Mo um, for allowing me to have a voice in this space. Uh, as a, as a filmmaker, that's what we strive for, right? To be able to connect with people and to tell stories. Uh, if you are in today and you want to ask questions, I'd love to uh, interact with you guys. So I do have a bit of a presentation to share with you. And so if you allow me to pull that up. Now I can share here. Okay. Fantastic, Judah. We, I can see it. It's coming through. Wonderful. So um, I'll introduce myself. I've been in the film industry for a bit over nine years now, and it's been an honor and a privilege working with some of the teams and my team in particular, uh, as I am the owner of Black and White Media, a production company here in Toronto, Canada. But that's not what drives me what motivates me and what pushes me forward in this industry is connecting people with visuals in particular. You see, since the dawn of human history, we as humans have used stories to pass on knowledge and create meaning. To this day, the only thing that's changed are the tools that we use to tell those stories. Now, more than ever, when we seem closer together in this globalized world, but and in individually, we're further and further apart. I, I believe that stories are the things that are going to pull us closer together. So I want to start this presentation by, I will, I'll show you a bit of my work, which I'm proud of. And this has just been the past six months. But all that is to say that in some respects, we've taken a hit, all of us, over the past year and a half, two years. And it's been difficult trying to find our way back to some sense of normal. Um, but for those of you still trying to figure out what that is, I want to share some hope with you. Um, over the past six months, because of grinding, because of not giving up, because, you know, we wouldn't settle for just, you know, staying in the corner while things happen. We have seen the biggest growth um, for my company and my team uh, in 10 years. So, Please enjoy this little reel, and I hope that uh, it gives you some sort of emotional pull. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream, and that you could, for example, have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time. And you would naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, you would fulfill all your wishes. You would have every kind of pleasure. And after several nights of 75 years of total pleasure each, you would say, well, wow, that's pretty great. But now let's, um, let's have a surprise. Let's have a dream which isn't done with me. Well, something is going to happen to me that I don't know what it's going to be. Uh, you, you would dig that and come out of that and say, wow, that was a, a close shave, wasn't it? Then you would get more and more adventures. And you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. Finally, you would dream where you are now. So, Judah, is that all your stuff there? Is that some cool, um, some cool stuff there? Yeah, yeah. This is, like I said, has just been a very eventful past six months or so. Um, I can't wait to see what the, well, I think that was basically from about uh, January to June, July. And so we have some really cool content that I'd love to share in the near future as well. And um, 
you know, one thing that's really important to me, and we'll touch on this as we get into a bit later is, you know, the tools that allow me to be able to go to these places and capture such, uh, such content. It, it really makes my job easier to, to think creatively and not be limited by the technology. Let's skip to the next one. So I want to talk about storytelling, visually in particular, and why it's so important to the human existence. You know, storytelling is an art form. It's described as an art form, and it's as old as time. And it has its place in every culture and every society. Why? Because stories are a universal language that everyone, regardless of dialect, hometown, or heritage, can understand. Stories stimulate imagination and passion, and it creates a sense of community along, uh, among the listeners and the storytellers alike. And so this is why uh, films, uh, podcasts, all these different mediums are coming up, but the intent of all of them is to connect human beings. So I want to talk about the three parts of storytelling, if I can, Mo. There, there are three things that make a make up story. Just the ingredients. Like if you're making a great dish, you got to have good ingredients. So the first one is a theme. What's the theme of your story? This is regardless of the medium. This is regardless of if it's film, commercial, music video, whatever industry you are working in right now. Let's talk about story. Plot. And then, of course, story. Now, here's the trick. Many people, including experienced filmmakers, depending on your industry, tend to conflate some of these ideas. So even myself, every once in a while, it's a good reminder to go back and try and understand what these three pillars are, how they intersect, and how they stand alone. So very quickly, what is a theme? A theme in any medium is an idea that a storyteller wants to make clear. In a visual story, in visual storytelling, sorry, this can be seen as a moment of realization, a lesson finally come to fruition, or an underlying truth that motivates a character. We'll, we'll give a bit more detail of what that is. That can seem sort of ethereal in, uh, in that explanation. So then what's a plot? A plot can be described as the steps that take place in the story to take the audience from A to Z. Or it can be described as the how, the, the when, and the why in a story. In a simple concept, the plot is a sequence of events that move the story along. So then, what's a story? The story is an emotional journey that typically a lead character will experience starting in one place and ending up in another. Just like a theme, this is an overarching idea that can be dissolved down to a few key points. How you tell the story depends on the journey that you want to take your audience on. All right, so let's use a real example because if you haven't seen Jurassic Park, you must have heard of it. This is a classic film. And this is a good example, actually. We, we've actually done a few thought experiments, thought exercises using this film, because this is one where people often conflate these ideas. And if I had a live audience in front of me, I would ask, so what do you think the theme is? Maybe, Mo, I don't know if you want to give it a shot. What You've seen Jurassic Park, right? Yeah, I've seen it actually, and um, you know it's probably a tough one, right? Is it? Uh, I can give it a shot. I can try to see what the sure. theme is. <laughs> I can tell you that I got it wrong, so don't feel don't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let me give it a shot. So, can I say, is it um, you know man uh, trying to influence nature? Is that very something? close? Very close. All that right. is a good theme. So, man should not play God. Right now, a theme is very broad, but in general, you can see it um, kind of you can see the path of the theme layered throughout a film or, you know, a book or a story. 
So what's the plot of this, of this film? So the plot of this film is that a scientist finds a way to recreate dinosaurs and it goes terribly wrong. I'm sorry, I should have said spoiler alert for those who haven't seen Jurassic Park. Um, but, you know, this is the how, the when, and the why. These are the steps that occur throughout this film that lead the main character through his story. And what's that story? This one I want to ask you because this is the one that people tend to trip up on. So you know what the theme is. You know what the plot is. What do you think the story is, Mo? All right, that's a tough one. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, don't worry. If, if, you, if you don't want to give it a stab, I know it's, it's a trick question, right? That's the whole point. Because there is a really clear uh, story here. But a lot of people look over it until someone says it out. And it's like, oh, of course. So the story here is that a man without kids finds himself in an unwanted position that teaches him how to be a father, right? And so you're wondering, how does the theme, the plot and the story intertwine together to make this great film? Well, the plot of the bad science happening and going wrong is what allows the character to go on this journey to find out that he actually is a great father and a great a great person to be a role model to these kids um, and you see this in a lot of great films that the character the lead character starts in one position where they're you know either they don't want to be there or they just don't know that they have this thing deep down in them but the plot takes you through so that the real character comes out at the end the hero's journey so very quickly, I know we're, we're on some time here, but I want to talk about some major themes that are used through literature, through film, uh, through all types of storytelling. And this is because it's part of the human experience. I can tell you that, for example, with God and philosophy, some of those ideas like faith versus fate, uh, maybe that the universe has a cold and meaningless kind of uh, existence. These things are experienced no matter what culture you're in. You could be across the world and, and understand visually what it means to have faith. As, as described in the Coen Brothers film, No Country for Old Men, that was a really strong theme. We have things like survival from Shawshank Redemption, virtue and values as portrayed in Kingdom of Heaven by Ridley Scott. You know, love has is a broad theme that can be boiled down to so many things. So, for example, this film, Eternal, I always get the, I always mix this name up. It's such a long name. Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. Great film, tough name, but the theme within love is that love can overcome so many things, including um, mental issues, right? Um, he tries to erase his mind, spoiler alert, erase his memory so that he can forget this person because remembering her is heartbreak. But true love breaks through all of that. Okay, these are, these are themes that are experienced across cultures. There's good versus evil, you know, and this one is very cool. You've seen it in many, many films, um, but it can be played with, I feel like, more than any of the other sort of themes. Good and evil is one of those where in human existence, we often try to understand where that line is. What is good? What is evil? What happens when you blur those two things? The Departed did such a great job of telling that story and intertwining what good and evil was. And then, of course, society. Now, again, I don't want to talk just to filmmakers because themes can be used in commercial work, uh, music video work. It should be used in almost everywhere you're, you're trying to portray a story. And so this is a great idea of society. Uh, I don't know if anyone has seen that Super Bowl commercial from a few years ago by Lumber 84. It was, it was sort of a game changer. It was a long format for a Super Bowl. And what you're thinking what does lumber have to do with society? 
I challenge you to go watch it and and see what the theme is going on in there. <clears throat> Principle two is plot. So what makes a good plot? The good plot explains the chain of events in a story. It shows a casual relationship between each event. So there's always a connection. And then it connects the action and events in a logical manner. So I don't know if, if you don't have to be a film critic. If you've seen a bad film, the first thing that goes, no matter how great the, the CG is or how great you know, the, the effects are, special effects, if it has a bad plot, if it has a bad story, you notice immediately and the film will be a bad film. Okay, so plot is very important to carry the story. Now, here's a great example of how a plot can be played with, tweaked and twisted, and more, more in particularly, used in a visual way. This is one of my favorite films, Memento. Memento uses color, it uses tone, it uses sound to, and, and all of this is a visual language. You could almost understand what's happening, even if there wasn't narrative, because of how the visuals are so unique to the plot and to the story. And finally, story. How does a story affect us? Stories challenge us. For example, I was telling you about good versus evil and blurring those lines. Some great films in history make you cheer for the for the antagonist and maybe go against the protagonist or how it's supposed to be uh, sometimes they inspire we've all seen great films that really challenge us and inspire us to do better and then of course they draw us in but how how do they do these things think exposition show when you can instead of tell there's this debate going on amongst filmmakers that I've seen, um, especially in the comedy world, where comedy has become sort of this um, stand up and talk at people rather than using visuals to create comedy. One of the great directors in this age that does visual comedy so well is Edgar Wright. And he did this film, Hot Fuzz. And maybe you've seen this clip. But to me, this is probably one of the best demonstrations of visual storytelling. And I'll explain a little bit about this after we watch for one minute. Man, I, I just love that. In what was that? Maybe 30 seconds, you get to experience uh, a story that is so powerful without really any narrative, without any like very um in your face sort of cues it, they're subtle for example you see that he's looking at his phone and the bars go down and that's showing that he's going to a place where there's no signal so he's traveling out of a city and then when he gets back into the city you see that the bars are up that means he's getting back into civilization so all of this is done visually without saying any words the taxi light going on and off showing that he's going somewhere and getting somewhere and then coming back on, then he's getting into a taxi. Like these are such creative ways to tell a story. And I think as a filmmaker, we sometimes get so caught up in doing it by the book or doing it a certain way that we forget that there's so many interesting ways to tell a story and we don't use visuals as much as we should. And I say we, including myself, I'm pushing myself. This is, you know, this talk is for as much for me as it is for anyone else listening. Push myself to try new things and to investigate visual ways to tell that story. Oh, let's get past this. So um, that's my spiel with storytelling in particular. Um, I'm sure Mo, if anyone wants to open up for questions, we can bring that in. But the next step for me is I wanted to talk about why, as a storyteller, 
I choose to use Sony products. This is, you know, on behalf of Sony and I, I am representing them. And because I chose out of all the options out there, I chose to use Sony and I can tell you why. So for me, there are three things that I look for um, in order for my technology, not just cameras, but technology in general. It has to be customiz customizable. There needs to be customization. And this is why I chose to purchase the FX6. For the type of work that I do, I can go super lightweight, super run and gun to go into action areas and capture things on a moment's notice. Or I can really build this camera out into something spectacular to use on a film set and get incredible shots in a very staged type of way. Both of these options are great, and this is why I choose the, the FX6. Not to mention all of the uh, sort of accessories that are readily available for this thing. Flexibility. Flexibility to me is fantastic, and it, it goes along with customization, but the flexibility to be able to use it in different ways. Um, for example, you know, to use it with a rig, and then flip it into a shoulder camera and do all these different things, it's important for me to be able to, uh, to just change on a fly and have that flexibility. And then function. Like I said, uh, function can be measured by its ability to interact with other devices. All right, so this is, this is probably one of my main setups here the FX6 on the crane, um, and either I'll be using a body rig or I'll just hold it up, which, you know, if you want to skip CrossFit one day, I challenge you to do that. Um, this is one of the best solutions for me. And because the camera has, you know, built-in MDs with the lens, with the Sony lenses, it can communicate and I can have amazing autofocus. So I don't necessarily need a full team with me to get cinema quality shots. If I need to go somewhere on my own without a full team of a cinematographer, you know, grip, uh, gaffer, all that, I can still get really high quality content with just a single shooter. All right. So there's a lot of functionality built into these devices. Not just that, but they have a full lineup from bottom all the way to top that you know you're going to get quality out of. Again, I don't want to make this like a sales pitch. This is not to sell anyone. I'm giving you my personal opinion of why I choose these products and will continue to do so. They're, they're coming out with some incredible, incredible products right now, incredible technology, and they're pushing the limit of what people can do in film. You know, just five years ago, to think that you could be shooting 4K in uh, 120p with such a incredible autofocus and beautiful color science, man, you would have to pay hundred, you know, hundred thousands of dollars maybe with, with these types of cameras and lenses and whatnot, but this is accessible to so many people now. So get rid of the excuses. Now you can just get rid of the hurdles. You have certain point on why I I choose this technology is that when you are in the midst of creating the last thing that you want to do is to think about the technology not being capable of doing what you want you want something that's fully capable so that it can take you to your own limit rather than the other way around where you're at the limitation of the technology so in in essence um you know you have no excuses if you have these uh cameras in your hand it's the limit is your imagination, your creativity, and the way that you take that story and tell it and connect with the audience. All right. So last slide for me, this just sharing with you guys some behind the scenes of where I've been. And a lot of this has been just in the past six months, like I shared. But my art is to bring people together. That for me is the art. 
my brush happens to be a camera and my canvas is a screen. But all together, stories make the human experience one to cherish and one to remember. And the question I'm, I'm asking you as filmmakers is where will your stories take you? Where are you going to find yourself telling the story and using the camera to connect with people? That's my question for you today. I've been honored to be able to go all around the world and film. You know, we've done, I personally have been involved in over 950 projects from small ones to large productions. You know, this is, I'm doing the Apple thing where I'm just rounding. It's something around that, you know, been to over 25 countries filming and in each place, the experience of connecting with the people there and creating something that will be memorable has always it's always the part that sticks with me. It reminds me that this is the passion that I live for. I, I love that I get to be able to do this. Um, so the, on my last note, before we get into some Q&A and some interaction here, Mo, if anyone wants to connect, I'm, I always love connecting with people in real life as well. Um, please reach out anytime. If I can answer any questions or be of any inspiration, I'd love to do so. Um, especially for the young filmmakers, it's, you know, it's, it's important to have a mentor and I have some mentors who are ahead of me, right? I'm not saying I'm at the, I'm not at the apex. I have mentors who are, um, who I look up to and want to emulate. So if I can be that for, for any young filmmakers, happy to do that. Oh, Judah, that's fantastic, man. Thanks for sharing the story with us and the art of uh, storytelling. I've got some homework to do as well. I need to go back and rewatch a couple of those uh, movies and yeah. <laughs> look yeah. at the plot, the theme, and of course, the storyline. Yeah. So my question for you before, if there are a question from the audience, my question for you is um, for young storytellers, for young yes. um, you know, filmmakers who are getting into the industry, um, you know, do you have some advice for them, advice for them? You know, what should they look out for? What should be their priority? How do they get to where you got to in a sense? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, how do they get to your, your level? Yes. Um, I feel like this applies to not just filmmaking, but just as a general rule of life. Um, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, I wish I knew that younger. You know, I was very, I would say, timid in, in my approach because I thought I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I didn't want to make mistakes and, and end up going backwards. But there's this concept that I'm learning about is failing forward. It's the idea that you can make mistakes. And by learning from those mistakes, you're one step closer to where you actually want to be. Sometimes the best lessons you can learn in life are the hardest ones. And, you know, it hurts in the moment, of course, like nobody wants to make a mistake, but the fear of making the mistake actually holds people back more so than the mistake itself. So I would say to the young filmmakers, try new things, try to, you know, do things that nobody else is doing, make a mistake with your film, do something crazy, and then you, you fail forward. All right. And. I don't know. That just applies to me in all walks of life, regardless of if it's film or not. Um, right. Failure is just one step closer to your um, destination if you keep moving. Right. So what about the, um, the aspect of um, getting into the business? Yes. Uh, is it technology first or the, the craft first, right? Storytelling yeah. aspect first. Now, what yeah. should be the focus in the early years of um, getting into the business? Story first. Story first. I know we're here, um, you know, with Sony, but I, I believe so strongly that story comes first before technology. Um, and then when you have a good, the ability to tell good stories, the technology opens up the world to you like, like nothing before. So learn the craft, learn how to connect with people, whether you're using an iPhone or you're using a Sony Venice the story is the most important thing. Right. All right. My, my other question is, I haven't seen yes. a question from the audience yet, but my other question is um, regarding the technology, right? Go to yes. talk technology. It's a technology show here. So um, in terms of the technology itself, um, what are some aspects of that technology that appeals to you? For example, does it make your, um, you know, your, 
your workflow more efficient? Is it your workflow? Is it image quality? Is it yes. you know sensor size? You know, is it uh, you know what do you look for in technology when you're trying to um, you know choose a piece of uh, equipment for yes. your um, project? Yes. Um, so, like I mentioned, the the three things I look for is customization, mm -hmm. um, functionality or utilization, and and then flexibility. So um, those three things kind of in, in any form of technology, allow me to choose the product that works best. Of course, you know, there are special circumstances where you need a specific tool, but just as a general rule of thumb, if you are going to be using something on a day-to-day -day basis, you want, you want to have that tool give you the widest amount of coverage. Um, so for example, with me and the FX6, right now I'm using my FX6 as my live streaming camera, like that is great functionality. And so when I do conferences and things like that, I, I use my FX6 and people are like, oh, how does your image look so good? It's because I have the functionality to do so. Um, you know, when I am on a film set uh, or a music video set and I need to be able to quickly change on the fly, uh, those are the things that I look for in the technology. But as far as the, the, like the camera itself, what I'm most looking for is, uh, for me, it's, it's color. As a visual storyteller, I focus on, on the story. Yes, it's true. But one of the things, and I, I think that Sony has come leaps and bounds. I've been using Sony for the past few years. One of the things that I sort of had to wrestle with over the past few years is the color science on, on some of the prosumer to pro cameras but in the last couple of years the, the the forward momentum that they've had especially with color has shocked me and it was one of the big factors why I jumped on the fx6 almost immediately when I saw like the s cinetone come out and straight out of the camera without you know there are those projects where you want to manipulate color and you shoot s log cine and you get into the details like that but straight out of camera and S Cinetone, my God, that was that was a game changer for me. There are so many projects where I just did not want to bother with the color, but I I still wanted quality, um, and that was that was fantastic. I'm so glad you mentioned S Cinetone and color science, right? Because it, it is um, a game changer for a lot of um, users who want yes. to go straight from the camera to um, you know to the final project or production yes. in sense and yes. bypass post in some yeah. applications. But this is more possibly kind of a personal type of question, um, mm -hmm. Jack, <laughs> Judah. Now, yeah. you, you're multifaceted, right? You've covered the entire gamut when it comes to the business. You do commercials, yeah. you do um, production and so forth. Yeah. What do you enjoy most? Um, is it the commercial side of it? Is it music video? What part of it do you enjoy most? I'll <laughs> be honest with you. I, I enjoy the challenge. So, when someone gives me a commercial that's meant to be boring or a, an industry that's meant to be boring uh, and they're like, you take creative reins. I'm like, all right, this is, this is my wheelhouse. That's you. You then have the ability to take something that traditionally should be like, yeah, just a boring video and then really work on it and, and surprise people. And the same thing, it, for me, it doesn't matter what it is now. I find that I have more creative license in places like music videos and, and films that maybe I've written, uh, done a couple of short films like that, and a few more to come in the near future. But, you know, even in the most boring industries, if somebody allows me to stretch my creative legs, that's when I find the most fulfillment and the most joy. And I find, you know, the client actually enjoys it a bit more when they're not even sure what they're going to get and they put full trust in the creative now again don't be afraid to make mistakes i've been in some situations where i've been given creative license and it didn't go the way i wanted but again it was a way to uh to to move forward right and and see what uh, people enjoy and don't enjoy those are amazing advice to uh, i really appreciate the feedback there i'm not sure if there's any question from the audience at all or uh anything you can definitely Put them in a the chat or in a Q&A section there. Uh, well, you know, if not, I'm not sure if you have any, um, you know, point, any points that you want to um, summarize at the end, Judah, anything you want to say at the end or your yeah. 
I know I touched on this briefly, but I, I want to stress again that your limitation should not be the technology, right? The only limitation should be your creativity. And, um, you know, Sony just, when I say just, over the past year, released some products that really allowed uh, filmmakers to stretch their own creativity because it opened up the, the limitations of the technology. Uh, so I challenge anyone to, to really get their hands, if they get their hands on, stretch your creativity, allow it to, to breathe, find the story and connect with people. But don't ever make the excuse that uh, technology is not allowing you to tell the story that you want to tell. Um, the technology is here. It's now. You don't have to wait for the future. Um, and I'm sure there are. there's always the next product coming down the line. But what you have now is the ability to reach more people than ever in history with tools that were not available to the average person. And they're all in your hands. Fantastic. I hey, love the story about storytelling, man. I've learned a lot today for sure. <laughs> Are there anything big on the horizon before you uh, you want to share, or you know, projects I, coming up, or anything cool that's um, happening next little while? <laughs> so, it's honestly it's been probably the busiest season. Like I said, over my close to ten years in the industry, um, it's been probably one of the busiest seasons for me personally. And so, I do have some creative projects that I'm working on that have had to take a back burner, unfortunately. But as soon as I, you know, find some time. I have a few projects that I will be releasing as well. Um, I'm, I'm going to be accountable. Okay. If you say things out loud to people, then you have some accountability right now. It's living in my head, but <laughs> I've been writing this, this baby of a script. I've been babying it since 2012 and uh, it's nearly done. I'm starting to look for funding and to make it. I, I think this may be, if done well, and you know everybody has their own imagination, but if I do it the way I dream it to be, it could be my, uh, my uh, calling card. How, how do you say? <laughs> <laughs> so this is my accountability. I, I got to get it done by next year and have it filming and in production before uh, or by 2023. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I don't think there are any more um, questions for the audience there, Judah. I okay. really enjoyed the talk. You know, thanks for having a conversation with us. Thanks for sharing. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm really inspired by the kind of work you've done and um, how you go about your business. And I'm glad that we can um, you know, support you with great technology. Yes. Um, for the audiences, um, thanks for your time. Thanks for joining us. Um, you know, feel free to reach out at any point. Um, we still have some time in the Sony booth. So if you want to take a look at the Sony booth, if you have any interest in products, feel free to reach out to the Vistec team as well. And again, thank you so much for your time, Judah. Pleasure. And uh, we'll be talking soon. All right. Thank all you right. all. Absolute and pleasure. Go out and create something. Fantastic. Thanks, everyone.